This is the Sure 75mm f1.8 anamorphic lens, and it's widely considered to render the highest quality anamorphic images that you can get for any anamorphic lens at this price point. But importantly, I'm not 100% sure that this should be your very first anamorphic lens. And I will circle back to that at the end of the video, although I do agree with everybody else, the images coming out of this lens are probably the best anamorphic images I've seen out of a budget-friendly anamorphic lens like this. And in full disclosure, Sure did send this lens out for the purpose of making this video, but all opinions are my own, and this is not a paid or sponsored video. And at the time of making this video, I did not realize there were significant discounts on this lens right now, including a coupon code. And I will put a link to those details in the description down below. Now, first, I want to talk about what is an anamorphic lens. This is an anamorphic lens with a 1.33 times squeeze factor. And essentially what that means is this lens is a 75 millimeter lens. So when we look at the field of view top to bottom, we've got a 75 millimeter field of view. But with that 1.33 times squeeze factor, this lens actually sees the width of a 56 millimeter lens. So we've got 75 millimeter lens this way, 56 millimeter lens this way. And it does that by introducing a barrel element in the front of the lens. So up until the point where we get to that barrel element, the lens and the lens elements look very much like any other normal sort of photography or video lens. This barrel element takes the image, it allows the lens to see wider, and it squishes that image in and it puts it on the sensor. And so you get what's called a squeezed image. And then you have to de-squeeze that in editing. The reason this is valuable is it allows us to shoot and use the entire resolution of our video and still get a very widescreen effect without putting black bars and throwing away resolution and chopping the image top and bottom. Now, interestingly, this technology has been around since the film days, and it worked in a very, very similar manner with kind of one exception, and that is the lenses still looked very much like this lens with a barrel element that allowed them to see wider, and then when that image was projected on the film, you actually got a squeezed image. But to de-squeeze it, what they did is they sent around to all the movie theaters and the movie houses a anamorphic de-squeezing lens that when they projected the light through that lens, it de-squeezed the image and stretched it out and made it look the way it was supposed to. So obviously they didn't do it in any sort of digital editing. It was actually all done organically with light and they had a lens that squeezed it and then they had a lens that de-squeezed it, which was pretty cool. Now they continued to use this sort of technology when we had digital because once again, we had sort of four by three sensors that were used for TV and then they wanted to get that widescreen effect they could add an anamorphic lens to give you that sort of stretched image or that Hollywood style widescreen image. And then they actually undid that in editing or de-squeezed it in editing, very similar to what you would do with this lens on your home computer now. And although this is a budget friendly lens, it's still an incredibly well built premium feeling lens. It is an all metal lens. It's an all metal body. It's got a metal lens mount. It has a very premium and smoothly operating focus and aperture ring. Importantly, this is an all manual focus focus manual aperture lens, which is typical of all anamorphic lenses that I know of. I don't think there are any anamorphic lenses that I know about that are autofocus. So when you get this lens, it feels completely premium. You feel like you are using a pro lens. And it has an incredibly sophisticated optical design. We're talking about 16 glass elements in this little lens in 12 different groups to sort of create this image that you're looking at. Now, Importantly, anamorphic lenses have to have additional lenses in them or additional glass elements because they've got to have that barrel element set up that allows the lens to see quite wide and gives you that squished image so you can de-squeeze it in editing and get that widescreen effect. So it still has to have all the basic elements that sort of a normal photography or video lens would have, but then it introduces those extra barrel elements to sort of achieve this result. That's why it's got 16 elements, which is probably the most of any sort of prime lens or fixed focal length lens that I know about. And I think that's because of those extra barrel elements that they've got to introduce for that anamorphic look. Now this is an APS-C or Super 35 lens. It comes in Sony E-mount, Fuji X-mount, Canon EFM, Nikon Z-mount, and Micro Four Thirds. And I think it might even come in RF-mount now because I've seen a few social media posts lately of people using the Red Komodo with this lens. So I think we've got RF available now as well. 
Now, the whole point of this lens is to get this widescreen effect, this anamorphic look. Now, importantly, there are a number of things that we get when we do this anamorphic thing and get this anamorphic look, which are just kind of side effects of what we're trying to achieve. The main thing we're trying to achieve is that widescreen image while retaining the detail and resolution that our sensor can render because you could just shoot a normal shot and chop top and bottom, throw away some of your camera's sensor resolution and get a somewhat similar look. To be able to use all the resolution in your sensor, you have to use an anamorphic lens and then that sees this widescreen effect, you de-squeeze it in editing and then you get to use the, say if it's a 4K video, you get to use the whole 4K rather than sort of a 3.5K or something like that, 3.2K, if you throw away the top and bottom. So the whole design of this lens is to get you that widescreen letterbox look. But when we do that, we get a bunch of side effects, which I think in normal situations would be considered optical flaws, but we now identify these things as being cinematic and we kind of register them as being part of an anamorphic look in a movie. So we have to actually look at those elements and, and evaluate those optical oddities or imperfections and see how they look as well. Now, the first one is lens flare and this particular lens renders a blue lens flare. Now, some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it, what happens is if you point this lens into light in certain situations, you get these huge blue lens streaks across the screen. Now, this is something we see in a lot of sci-fi movies. This is something we see in a lot of Hollywood movies. It's a very, very common look. But what I will say is it isn't for everyone and it isn't necessarily for every shot. Now, importantly with this lens, I think the flares do look pretty good when you do use them and you are trying to take advantage of that blue lens flare look but it actually isn't very hard if you just shield the lens from that direct light coming in or you frame your shot in a certain way to actually remove most or all of those lens flares. So when I was shooting with this lens, I did find it quite easy to bring those flares on and get this sort of really crazy anamorphic look, this lens flare look, if that's what I wanted. But I did find it quite easy to sort of shield this from that direct light and, and remove that almost completely or completely. So I think it's a very interesting look. I think the flares look good, but importantly, you can control them and you can use them when you want, but you don't have to use them all the time. Now, the next thing you're gonna get with this lens and sort of most anamorphic lenses is oval bokeh or oval specular highlights. Now, when you've got a 1.33 times squeeze factor, you're not going to get quite the same level of oval bokeh. And in the other lenses in this lineup, you almost get none. It's very hard to even notice that the, that the bokeh is oval. But with this 75 millimeter, you do get some degree of noticeable oval bokeh. Nothing anywhere near like you'd see with a 1.6, 1.8, or two times anamorphic lens but it's definitely there, it's subtle, and it does add an in interesting look to your footage. And I think importantly, the out of focus areas in general are very soft, not distracting. I think they look quite good and they do look quite cinematic, which is important because that's kind of the whole purpose of this lens. We want everything to look really cinematic. The other thing that is an optical imperfection that you often get when you introduce a barrel element into your optical system is barrel distortion and distortion. And that is pretty common. And there's some Hollywood lenses out there, some anamorphic Hollywood lenses that give you crazy barrel distortion. And next time you're watching Netflix or watching a movie that's got that really epic widescreen effect, have a look for barrel distortion. You might notice some crazy barrel distortion that's like never been on your radar before because it's something that I notice all the time now that I'm looking for it. But we often just see it as cinematic because we're so used to seeing it. Now, this particular lens actually renders the images pretty well straight. You get a very modest amount of barrel distortion across the top edge. And then on the very sides, you get a very modest amount of pin cushion distortion, but the amounts that you get are very, very minor. So I think this lens in that regard, as far as distortion goes, is reasonably clinical. So you're not getting a whole bunch of distortion that you sort of need to worry about or think about dealing with. Now, there are a couple of imperfections that I wanna point out about this lens, just so you're aware of it. 
And these are imperfections that are actually found in much more expensive lenses as well. This is more a part of just having an anamorphic lens. And the first one is we do get a variable squeeze factor based on how far away the subject is from the lens that we're focusing on. So when we're focusing on something that is at infinity, we're going to get a 1.33 times squeeze factor. When we're focusing on something that's about at minimum focus distance, we're going to get a 1.29 times squeeze factor. Now, depending on what that subject is that's close to the camera, this won't necessarily matter. But if it is a person, or if it's a perfectly round object, or if it's something that really is something that the human eye and our brain will calculate that doesn't look quite right, you might have to tweak the squeeze of the footage in editing. It's not a big deal. Once you understand what you're doing, it's pretty easy. And you can also get to the point where you kind of estimate how far away from the camera the subject is when you shot this, and you can quickly dial in some settings and sort of sort that out and everything will look natural and normal. But it is something you obviously don't have to deal with with a normal photography lens. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. The next thing that is particular to this lens is nailing focus at a long distance at f1.8 can be a bit challenging. And that's because the difference between sort of 65 feet and 20 meters to infinity is a very, very short throw. So there were times when I was focusing, when I was focusing on things that were a long way away that I did struggle to nail that focus. Now, this was kind of easily resolved if I just shot, stopped down to f2.8 or f4, and then I had no problems nailing focus. But at f1.8, with objects that are a long way away, it can be challenging at times to nail focus. The next thing I wanna point out is color cast, and you'll actually be able to see this if you can look through the lens here and look at the white table. As you can see, the white table does not look very white when you look through the lens. That's because this lens has a very, very warm yellow cast. Now, this isn't very hard to sort out in editing or with your white balance in camera, but you do need to be aware of it. You are going to get a warmer tone. Now, you can work with this, and in most situations, if I shot and published right out of camera, I thought it just made it almost look more cinematic. This warm look is very common in Hollywood but you aren't getting a clinically color accurate image like you would with a standard photography lens. You are getting a very warm cast with this lens. Now, when we look at the image quality coming out of this lens, I think this is a place that this lens really sets itself apart from all of the other lenses. It is really clinically sharp, almost across the entire frame, wide open at f1.8. And the image is really, I think, on par with a lot of photography lenses, which quite surprised me because with anamorphic lenses or cinema lenses, we're usually looking at a sort of a lower contrast, lower detail, little less sharp image. This is actually quite clinically sharp, even though it is still a little bit lower contrast and a little bit warmer, giving you that filmic look. It's definitely sharp. So I think even pixel peepers will be satisfied with the sharpness and detail that you get out of this lens. The other thing that it does a really good job of is controlling focus breathing. There is the most modest amount of focus breathing, but in my test, it was nothing that would distract the viewer's eye from, which is pretty important when it comes to cinema lenses. So when you do those sort of manual focus pulls from somebody in the foreground to somebody in the background, you're not getting this super zooming in and out effect. You do get a little bit of swell in the frame, but nothing that's too distracting or anything that I would even feel the need to correct in editing. So I think the most important question I've got is who is this lens for? And the first of all, I, I don't think this lens is for people looking for their very first anamorphic lens. I think this is for people looking for their second anamorphic lens. And the first anamorphic lens I would recommend is the 35 millimeter f1.8. I've thrown that video on screen now. This is my favorite starting budget anamorphic lens. And once you've got that lens, I think this lens makes an incredible companion lens to get those hero shots, shots off in the distance, subject isolation. And that is a two lens combination that would really, really be a great starting point for anamorphic video footage. 